Hello everyone, I'm Steph Haynes, and welcome to the second part of my video tutorial explaining how I use the Nintendo Wii Remote with MainStage and Ableton Live for my Ewe performances. Alright, so I'm going to try my best to make these tutorials as accessible as possible, but you're definitely going to need to have at least a little bit of prior knowledge about MIDI mapping and instrument racks. The first thing that you should do is just make sure that Oscillator Out is showing up as a MIDI device. So now that all of the MainStage users are gone, I can finally say that Ableton is in most ways the superior software. The one area where Ableton falls short in comparison to MainStage is when it comes to really fine-tuning our MIDI mappings. Every time you try to MIDI map something in MainStage, a little graph comes up and asks you exactly how you want your MIDI data to be interpreted by the software. This is super handy when you're collecting MIDI data from something like a Wii Remote, which wasn't ever really designed to be used in this way. In order to make up for this shortcoming, we're going to have to head over to maxforlive.com to download a device called Multimapper, link below. Not only is this thing super cool and extremely well designed, it's also free. That said, please consider donating to the creators since our entire rig is basically dependent on this one device. So let's go ahead and drag this into our instrument rack. The first thing that we need to do now is map our roll input into some of these knobs. This is just like MIDI mapping anything else inside of Ableton, but you have to be a little bit careful because Oscillator is constantly sending MIDI data, right? It's constantly receiving every tiny movement that the Wii Remote makes and sending it to your DAW, so it's really easy to accidentally map something to the motion controls when you don't mean to. To avoid this, just go into Oscillator and uncheck the boxes next to whichever control you aren't trying to map. So for instance, since we're only trying to map the roll input, let's just go ahead and uncheck the pitch box. Now, we're only going to be receiving a constant signal from MIDI input number 8. So now let's head back to Ableton and hit the MIDI box in the top right over here. Bam! Now we're in MIDI mapping mode, so anything that we click is going to be controlled by our roll motion. Let's go ahead and click the top row of virtual dials here. Before you exit out of MIDI mapping, just double check that you didn't accidentally assign anything to the roll function that you didn't mean to. Now you can see that the little dials are moving in tandem with our Wii Remote. Pretty neat, but as you can see, we need to move the instrument a whole lot to even get a little bit of motion out of these dials. To fix this, we need to click on the curves and draw in some fancy graphs over here. So at this point, it probably makes sense to show you some graphs from my live performing setup so you can get an idea of exactly what needs to happen with these graphs. So let's take a look at the first two graphs on the top right here, the ones labeled macro A1 and macro A2. These are both acting on a virtual device in my instrument rack called Chopper. Macro A1 is basically just acting as an on-off switch for the device. As you can see, whenever the little line representing the Wii Remote passes to the right of this line, the device lights up. The second macro, macro A2, is controlling the rate dial in the Chopper device. So you can see that the line doesn't extend all the way to the top of the graph here. And that's because I only wanted the dial to climb up a certain amount. You can set this up, by the way, by clicking on map in the device and then clicking map again next to whichever macro you want to assign. If you do it correctly, the name of the parameter that's being controlled by the macro should automatically pop up in place of the word map in the map box. So over here, for example, device on is under parameter for the A1 macro, and then for the next one, sync rate is in that little box for the A2 macro. So macros A3 and A4 are also being controlled by the roll input, but instead of being activated by a roll to the left, they're activated by a roll to the right. So these macros control the volume on my Dempa harmonizer device. So whenever I twist the instrument to the right a little bit, I fade in two more notes, a perfect fifth and fourth under the note that I'm playing. So while I'm here, I might as well show you macro A6, which is controlled by the tilt on my Wii Remote. So I've already gone in and checked the pitch box in Oscillator so that now you can see that the tilt is affecting these little dials on the bottom in the multi-mapper Arturia macros. So I switched to the Arturia instrument rack because I wanted to show you the effect that this macro has on this other Max for Live device called MIDI Wheels. So MIDI Wheels acts like a virtual pitch bend and mod wheel. Max for Live devices can be a little bit janky sometimes, so as you can see on the screen here we're not getting a really clear visual for the way that this works, but uh, as you can hear, 
it works just fine. We're going to set up the pitch controls the same way we set up the roll controls, remembering, of course, that we need to unselect the roll box within Oscillator so that we don't accidentally assign that to what we're trying to assign our pitch to. So I set up my pitch control so that the effect is only triggered when my instrument reaches a certain angle. All of these motion controls should feel like they're natural movements and you shouldn't be accidentally triggering them when you don't mean to or having to move way too much to trigger them. So, you know, just go mess with these graphs until it feels really comfortable to play. You're probably going to spend a fair amount of time editing these graphs at first just to get everything fine-tuned, but eventually you'll find the perfect spot for everything and that's when you're really going to feel like you're one with your instrument. So you can also MIDI map the buttons on the Wii Remote as well. I use mine to turn on effects such as delay, arpeggiator, reverb, stuff like that. Just be sure that you have the pitch and roll boxes unchecked before you do any of that. So before we finish up, I just want to talk about my process for creating these graphs. I find I get the best results if I hold my instrument as though I'm going to play it, and then I do the movement that I'm trying to write the graph for, say a roll to the left. And then I try to imagine at what point during this motion do I want the effect to trigger. So say... There, that's where I want it to trigger. I'm gonna take a look at the graph. I'm gonna look at where the line is. I'm gonna be like, okay, that is where I need to start the uh, the curve that I'm drawing in. It takes a little bit of trial and error to get it perfect, so be patient. That's it for this tutorial video. I hope that everything makes sense. Please toss me a like if you found this to be helpful. Also, huge thanks to the creators of Multimapper. Please donate to them and stay tuned for some more videos on my EV rig. I promise they won't all be this complicated. Until next time.